<laughs> Welcome to the third edition of Talk Death, Bodies and Forensic Science with Vidal Herrera. Hi, Vidal. Hi. Sure. So uh, the next one is from Connie on Facebook. Um, and she wants to know, uh, how do you keep your heart out of it if that's even possible to do? And uh, how do you detach every day? You know, after what you've witnessed, like do you, you know, when you go home, you leave work, like can you actually leave work behind you? Well, that, that's a, a question that's commonly asked. And uh, I just, was, someone asked me that the other day. We, we talk about first responders, uh, police officers, firemen, uh, uh, ambulance personnel who go to scenes and how they get hurt, how they traumatize, but they never talk about crime scene investigators, deputy medic, and what they see on a daily basis. And yes, it does affect you. For me, this started back when I, when I actually began this profession, I was a volunteer. And what they told me is you do not ask questions. We ask you, we tell you that you said, yes, sir, or no, sir. And when, when I was placed into a room with 10 different tables, 10 different bodies, I'm there with many, many people, you don't have time to think about each body because everybody has a different story mm -hmm. and you start lagging you pick up the, the read it you're out they eject you so when i got into this profession as a volunteer they had 750 volunteers two and a half years up i was the only one that made it because i followed orders and yes there were many times because several of my friends were killed and they were there three feet away from me and i wanted to go and look at them but i couldn't because i knew they were looking at me but you separate the, the reality of what's happening, you com I, basically you, you, com you compartmentalize your thoughts. Yeah. Again, you have to focus on the next body, the next body. So it just it, you do it like that, it starts again. The next page comes up, you do it. And you just keep doing it and that's how you do it. And yes, there are times that I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress syndrome back in 1985. That's the first time I ever heard of the word. I do have what they call nightmares. I don't look at them as nightmares. I just dream about cases, but it has affected me, but I don't look at it positively. It's just part of what we do. Yeah. I mean, and you speak about this really passionately and I'm curious if you've ever been able to pinpoint what about it, about this job allows you to be so passionate. I guess it's when I started, uh, when I saw the, the, the enormity, it just galvanized my consciousness. and I said, wow, this is incredible. I want to learn more. And, you know, when I was young, I was going to be an altar boy thinking about religion. And you put out religion because the things you see on a daily basis. I remember I went to a priest and asked him, if there is a God. Why does it allow these people to be killed in this manner? He gave me a typical religious. And because of that, I just I don't think of religion anymore. In my heart, I do think about it, but I don't practice it because I see the real world, what's happening. 